minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, which is full power, and lift off. Go Falcon, go Star. Vehicle Stage one propulsion is nominal. At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Coming up next, the vehicle will be passing through Max Q which is the point in the mission profile where the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of aerodynamic pressure. Power as and telemetry nominal. Good call out there. As it ascends through the Earth's atmosphere, we should be hearing that call out for Max Q in just about 15 seconds Mach from now. One. And another good call out there. Max Q is, of course, a critical milestone for us here at SpaceX because it is that period of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the rocket during ascent. Max Q and confirmation that we've made it through. So coming up next, we'll have three events happening in quick succession, starting with Miko, followed by Stage SEP, and then Second Engine Start One, or SES One for short. Now, Main Engine Cutoff, or Miko, is where all nine Merlin 1D engines shut down in preparation for stage separation, which is where the first stage separates from the second stage. Following that, the MBAC engine on the second- MBAC has started. Good call out there. Following that, the MBAC engine on the second stage will light, which is called out over the nets as Second Engine Start 1, or SES-1. That first engine burn of MVAC will last several minutes and propel the second stage and the payload to orbit. In addition to these three major events, the fairing halves will also separate less than a minute after SES-1. So keep an eye out for all of those on your screen here. We should continue to have great views of our launch today. And of course, we are always listening into Mission Control for the latest Nominal and greatest. trajectory. And... and confirmation there that we're on a nominal trajectory. Now we should be hearing that call out for main engine cutoff in just about 15 seconds from now. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. And there you heard those three callouts back to back, which again were Miko, stage separation, and SES 1. Now, coming up shortly, we should hear a callout for fairing separation. And as mentioned earlier, both payload fairing halves supporting tonight's mission are flight proven, with one half flying for its 22nd time and the other flying for its 14th. Should hear that call out any moment now. Great views there that we have confirmation of fairing, fairing separation. separation confirmed. And the call out for mission control. We will, of course, be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again today once they fall back to Earth with our recovery vessel, Bob. Now, at T plus three minutes and 40 seconds into today's mission, the next major milestone coming up just under three minutes from now will be the entry burn of the Falcon 9 booster as it continues on its journey towards our drone ship, which is currently stationed in the Bahamas. To start the entry burn on board stage one, we will relight three of the M1D engines at the bottom of the first stage, which is similar to pumping the brakes on your car. What we're doing is slowing down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down to reduce re-entry forces, which helps us to recover and reuse that first stage. Now, during that entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but it's still moving incredibly fast and this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume, which deposits a layer of soot onto the vehicle's surface or skin. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle. 
Of course, at this point in the flight, we have two really exciting things going nominal on. Nominal trajectory. And there's a confirmation from Mission Control that we're on nominal trajectories, which means that everything is going as it should. You hear us use the word nominal a lot here at SpaceX, and that means that things are right on track. If you're interested in following along with the speed and velocity going on with both of our vehicles, you can track the telemetry in the bottom corners of your screen. Again, on the left-hand side of your screen, we're tracking stage one on its way to the Bahamas. And on the right-hand side, we have the MVAC burning up in space. Now here at SpaceX, reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical space infrastructure. The Falcon 9 first stage that, will be, uh, that is supporting today's mission is flying for its 16th time today. Those payload fairings, which are also supporting tonight's mission, are flight proven with one half flying for its 22nd and the other half flying for its 14th. With that entry burn coming up on stage one, we're going to use the Merlin engines on the first stage again. Those engines are optimized for sea level and achieve about 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. At liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has the thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. Now the MVAC engine located on the second stage, which is on the right-hand side of your screen, possesses a much wider nozzle and is optimized to 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Coming up in just about 10 seconds, we'll have the entry burn of that first stage. The landing burn should then follow at about seven minutes and 52 seconds into our mission today. Stage one entry burn startup. There's confirmation of entry burn startup. Expecting out 10 more seconds on this burn. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And confirmation of shutdown. And we are already getting some great views on your screen there. And we are hoping that all of you joining us from the ground in the Exumas are going to have a oh, great view. On a nominal trajectory. Great view of landing, too. And there's another call out that everything is headed in the right direction. Now, coming up in just about a minute from now, we should hear that H1 call. H1 FTS has saved. Another good call out there. In about a minute from now, we should hear that call out for landing bird startup on the Falcon 9 first stage, which, as a reminder, is on the left hand side of your screen. We're also getting great views of those titanium grid fins that are helping to steer the booster on its way back to Earth. Now this landing burn will be the final burn of the booster as it descends back to Earth. And as a reminder, it'll Stage be- Stage two FTS has saved. Another good call out there. As a reminder, it'll be doing this for the 16th time today. Stage one, transonic. And good call out there that stage one, the booster on the left-hand side of your screen is now transonic. Now, coming up in just about 20 seconds, we should see that landing bird startup on the first stage. And just in case you are just joining us today, this is particularly exciting because this is about to be the first international landing of a first stage booster. Stage one landing bird. And great call out there for landing bird startup. Stage two is in terminal guidance. Of the Falcon 9 first stage. We're now waiting for Falcon 9 to land on Just Read the Instructions, currently off the coast of the Bahamas. Stage 1 landing leg deploy. Stage 1 landing confirmed. And there you heard that call out for successful landing of our Falcon 9 rocket. And you can hear the cheering behind me. Welcome to the Bahamas, Falcon 9. Now, as a reminder, this was the 16th launch and landing for this first stage. And meanwhile, that second stage is on track to complete the rest of its mission today to deliver 23 Starlink satellites to low Earth that. orbit. That will bring to a close our coverage of SpaceX's 21st launch of the year and 234th Starlink mission to date. Today's launch will further increase Starlink's capacity to deliver high-speed, low-latency connectivity across the globe. Streaming, video calls, online gaming, remote working, and more are now possible in even the most remote locations, thanks to the world's most advanced internet system. And